Welcome to Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric and Countdown to Christmas 2021. Today I will be sharing with you wooden ornaments and some wooden decorations that can liven up the home during the holiday season and in some cases add a little peacefulness to the home when it's not the holiday season. So let's jump in and start with one of my all-time favorite ornaments that my husband has made. And it is, oh, I didn't realize when I decided on what shirt to wear today that I was picking a shirt that matched the paint job on this little airplane. <clears throat> it has been nearly three decades since this ornament was made by my husband to go on one of our very first Christmas trees. In fact, it could be, if I remember correctly, the first Christmas we were together. As I've said in other um, vlogs, my husband and I um, decided to uh, collect Christmas ornaments every year for our tree. And that first few years, the finances were really tight. And so the idea of making our own ornaments was something that we thought would be a good solution to our financially um, tight budget. <laughs> when he had been younger, he had done a number of um, models, doing um, wood models. Um, I think he did cars more than anything. And so he had a, uh, an airbrush for painting. He had some balsa wood. He had a dowel. And so with basic tools and then with the airbrush and leftover paints from his youth, he made this little aircraft. It doesn't have a hook. When we put it on the tree, we just shove one of the branches into, I believe it's a tailpipe, <laughs> the exhaust pipe there. I think it's the exhaust. My husband will watch this video and shake his head, I am sure. But that's how we hang it on the tree. And it is always one of the dearest ornaments that we pull out every year. Because my husband wasn't really sure he had the artistic ability to make ornaments. I think a lot of people feel as he did all those years ago, a little intimidated that it won't, it won't be as appreciated. It won't reach a certain standard of refinement. And I had to really encourage him to keep working on it. I, I had to, I had to really work to help him overcome his hesitancy. And that is what he created. It's simple, but it is cherished. And the honest truth, even he, all these years after, looks at it and he's pretty proud of his attempts all those years ago, because that's a pretty nice little airplane. <laughs> so that little wooden ornament was the first wooden ornament that was handmade that went onto our tree. And over the years, um, as I did all my different types of crafts, I kept encouraging him to take up some handcrafts, some hobbies. And over time, <laughs> excuse me, over time, um, I started to make inroads. It started with us needing to do a lot of construction for the build of our home. Uh, then it came to the home repairs, the building of a garage and outbuildings, and little by little, I started, I kept, I, little by little, he accumulated quite the wood shop, mainly because I kept buying him more toys every Christmas when the items were on sales. Christmas and Father's Day, I looked for the good sales. I kept purchasing for him things for him to try. <laughs> I had an ulterior motive. As someone who loves to craft, I wanted my husband to have that joy, to have that, that experience, and also to have something that he can go and do in the wood shop while I'm in the sewing room or at the spinning wheel. Yes, there was an ulterior motive. He's well aware of the ulterior motive. It made me sad to think of all of the, I know a lot of, and it's not just wives, 
a lot of spouses who find themselves as retirement years, you know, approach or descend, find themselves at odds with their spouse because their hobbies and interests seem to diverge rather than converge. And I knew that it didn't matter what he spent time making. If he was making things, if he was creating things, if he was exploring his creative um, passions, that we would have cohesiveness. We don't have to be in the same room, we don't have to be on top of each other, and we don't have to be doing the same project for us to feel the camaraderie of making gifts, of making household items. And so year after year, I worked on this, um, this plan to make sure that when he hit his retirement years, he would have hobbies that did not require him going out into the cold, going, he loved to fish, but it wasn't always feasible um, for him to, to go fishing. And it wasn't always feasible for me to go with him as his fishing companion. So one of the things we really learned in living in Colorado versus now living in Virginia is that where your workshop is located, the comfort of your workshop, whether it is a sewing room, whether it is um, a wood working room, whether it's in the basement of your home, in a small spare bedroom, on the kitchen table, having organization, having warmth and comfort makes a huge difference in how much time we spend doing our craft. So when we moved here to Virginia, when we had to adjust to a different home, a different set of space, a different size of um, workrooms, that was one of the things I really focused on is how we can be organized. And it's amazing how converted to the notion of storage bins that are labeled and clear so that you can see into them and, and, and really good shelving, how converted to that notion he has really become and um, how much more productive and how much more joy he gets from the process. And so whether it's a small space or a large space, finding an organization system that works for us, works for our, our own needs is a must. So before we moved here, we were definitely um, making wood ornaments. My son, uh, he ended up taking on um, years ago, he started working with um, different tools to make ornaments like this. And my husband also, he, he took some time and, and they played with this. But while this appealed to my son quite a bit, my husband didn't, it, it, it wasn't giving him the sense of refinement and joy that he wanted. Because, you know, the honest truth is somebody who can throw this together as their first, you know, wooden tree ornament they really are going to always want to have refinement. They're going to, they're going to, <laughs> the three foot rule of if it looks good from three feet, it's fine, isn't necessarily going to satisfy his desire for precision. When I first, um, when we were first, first married, one of the jobs that he had back in those days, um, he worked with uh, uh, machine work and he worked with metal and the precision of accuracy was intense and scary and completely different than what we have when we, um, when we quilt and what we have when we build a, a garage. The precision of accuracy that he was accustomed to was very, very precise. A quarter of an inch would have been just a gigantic, you know, error. So, he couldn't find as much joy with this. My son, he did, and he, he, he enjoyed it. He's done some other things. He hasn't settled yet as to what his real passion is, um, but he's learned the skills from both his dad and his mom. So we have those. One of the things that my son played with, um, because we, and I'll have a, I'll have a video that talks about working with um, polymer clays, etc. 
But one of the uh, sweet little ornaments that he made for us was this one. And it was a combination of making clay beads and these are just plywood rings. And they are cute and they hang from the tree. And for those of you with small kids and with cats, they are really, or dogs, uh, I, I don't know about dogs. Not being a dog owner, but having had dogs in the past, not really sure this would work for dogs because something tells me if you have a chewy dog, they'll eat this. But for cats, this is a really cat safe bottom of the tree ornament. So he made a number of those. Um, as I said, he's, he's done a few different types. My son has done a few different types. Um, playing around, trying, trying different, you know, techniques. But my husband, what really ended up changing his, uh, and I meant to actually bring this over here because I know that it is better if I'm talking to the microphone as opposed to facing away. So I apologize, I apologize for that. But for my husband, the real turning point came for him when he took up wood turning. And he has made a number of delightful, in fact, here on the tree behind me is a small birdhouse that he's made, a number of bells, one down here as well, and of course the standard, what a lot of wood turners do, um, finial ornament. So he's made a number of those. But in this past couple years, he's beginning to branch out and try his own style on, try, um, well, like in the, or the bells, he's started using paint techniques again, and he's letting go of his fear of not having something perfect and precise. In fact, one of my new favorite decorations for Christmas that he's made, he came to me, I think it was, it may have been last year, um, it may, it, I think it might've been last year. He came to me and said, um, I, I need a piece of faux fur. I need a piece of faux fur, um, about such and such size. And this is what he had made me. It is just two simple pieces of wood with a little tiny nose and some fake fur. And he made me an elf. It is so simple and it is so sweet and it sits at my desk year round because it is just, it is like the perfect, perfect gift for me. I, when I was in, in Colorado, my sewing area was down in the basement and I used to joke, I lived always in the basement and I said, I, I live underground. I must be a gnome. I must be, <laughs> I must be um, somehow some sort of underground, you know, creature at this point, but I just love him. He, he really is a simple, adorable little creature that my husband made for, for me, knowing that it was something I would love. He has also started playing with segmented woodwork and has done some things of this nature. So, you know, he, he spends a lot of time making me, um, beautiful things, making our home beautiful things, trying out new skills and techniques and not worrying so much about the imperfections. So let me grab a couple more things to show you this year, some of the things of this last couple years and this year that he has contributed. So. Last year, he made me this. He was playing around with turning when you still have, in essence, some of the branches from our trees out back, playing with the rough edges. And he made me just this little Christmas tree and I loved it. And I have it on this shelf. It stays out. I've got a couple little trinket, um, little fairy, little that are dressed in red. Um, I'm sure I'll show a picture. Um, and I, and I just love them and it sits out. Well, this year I have the notion that we should do tea light sets that, um, and for people who do wood turning, you know, that they'll know, um, there's different, you know, the, when you turn things that, you know, you, for those of us who don't turn, 
You're like, well, just go get a log that's the size you want and just turn it. But there's problems with that. So convincing my husband to actually try that type of turning um, has taken a little bit of persuading. And he's like, okay, but the problem with it is it starts out round, but it can warp and become a little bit more egg shaped. And I love the look. So I asked him to make me tea lights. And he did. And he made me a set of three very rustic tea lights to go with my little Christmas tree. And he's made some for my son. He's made some to give away. And that was, again, him stepping out of his comfort zone, trying something a little new to make me happy. But in turn, he found that there was a great joy in it. But this notion of tea lights, of course, when you buy anything from the mega online shop that we shall not name, um, you end up oftentimes not just buying a couple, but you end up buying a whole case. And now what am I going to do with these tea lights and who am I going to give them to? So he started, he started playing around just a bit more. And let me actually switch this out. This one that lights, it's already turned on. And look what he came up with. So this is a segmented piece and he was just simply playing and look, there's segments down on the bottom. It's segmented rings and then he turned it and he's made me a whole bunch of mushroom tea lights. I think he told me that he's up to like six of these that are made. So <laughs> I have a bunch of tea lights. And I can, the and a wonderful thing is, these are things that if I had unexpected guests, which hopefully if I put this video out doesn't mean I'm going to have a whole bunch of unexpected guests, but if I have unexpected guests, these are fabulous little Christmas gifts to give. They bring joy. They, it literally lights up my home with a soft, gentle light. And I love using these little electric tea lights no chance of catching on fire, you know, oh, just isn't that sweet. And it's a way for him to practice the technique of creating segmented rings, but in a way that the imperfections or issues of learning doesn't prevent him from trying. So I had to share these. These are my pride. I am so proud of my husband for the growth that he has um, made in these nearly three decades together, in his cur courage to try new things, his courage to embrace imperfections and to give it a try and, and to make me beautiful things, to make me, um, you know, these, these gifts of love. So I want to end, I want to end. <laughs> I always like to try a few of the things and yes, I've tried turning and I like to try a few of the things that I <clears throat> coerce my family into trying. And this year, one of the, the new things I wanted to try, um, and I will put the word here because I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Every time I try to pronounce it, it comes out completely garbled. My daughter and my husband both completely laugh at me, but it's wood burning. And it has a word and I can't pronounce it. And so this year I saw on another show, somebody doing this wood burning technique. And I've, I know about wood burning and, and all that, but the technique they were doing with the wood burning and painting intrigued me. And so my husband, he, he got a log and he cut me up a bunch of little rings that I could wood burn in the shapes of trees and then paint. And I have, those are, these are, have their strings already attached because they're natural worm holes in the wood. He'll need to draw, drill me some holes in the rest of them. But I've made a whole set of them. I've, I've painted in them. I had fun. I've made pine trees and just, just had fun. And I'll show a picture of them because it's hard to, it's hard to hold these up and get them just right on the, the camera. There's a little bit of metallic paint 
to them and so they shimmer a little and so I wanted to share those quick little things it's a wood burning tool we have just purchased uh, one that's um, got knobs and controls and we can adjust the settings but even a basic inexpensive wood burning tool like the one that I use when I'm doing embroidery and I need to cut away organza from a, a design even a simple burning tool can help you create something like this and then I just used acrylic paints metallic acrylic paints and I think it's a lot of fun I think it's a project that that if a child old enough to use a heat gun a child can use a basic burning tool um, and I know these types of blocks you can purchase you don't have to go out and cut down on your own tree in the backyard but you can purchase this and and honestly if you're one of the people who buy their own pine trees at Christmas their Christmas trees you probably with a simple enough saw could cut off some ends and make something like this out of your Christmas tree before you toss it out to be hopefully recycled into wood chips so something to keep in mind something to think about whether it is pretty freaking elaborate <laughs> or really basic a wood tool or not tool a wood toy a wood ornament a wood decoration brings joy and it helps us pass on the love of crafting to another generation when we share it so there it is I hope you have time today to do some unwinding with fiber and fabric and that you have joy in the things that you do we'll see you again tomorrow until then bye bye <laughs>